So, Hello. Hi, James. Uh, yeah, sweet. Slimbox. Yeah, I'll leave so, the change. I've yeah. been heckled for a long time and asked him to give a talk. I'm like, I don't have anything to give a full talk. I could maybe do a five minute show and tell. Um, my first project that I was working on was an implementation of VI and Go. Vigo. Uh, the other guy I've been working with off the face of the planet, so I decided to start a second project that was even sillier. <laughs> It was started off as the GNU text utils, but then I decided a busy box implementation would be a lot more fun. And it's very recently started. Um, there were multiple reasons I decided I wanted to do this. One, uh, learning Go, much better. I wanted to learn more about dealing with the terminal, low level stuff in the terminal, so that I can go back and do the Vigo project again without anybody else involved, and I don't have to be waiting for people to pull merge requests. Um, turns out when I started doing it that all these small programs that we use in, in Linux or BSD or whatever flavor of BSD you're using, like Mac, there's a lot of fun edge cases. And the problem domains of things like CAT and NL, which seem to have some overlap in functionality, there's, there's actually very, there's differences in things you have to learn. So they're, they're fun, small, bite-sized problems to work on. So it's been very, I've been enjoying that a lot. Currently, I only have cat implemented. So that's like the most epic project ever. I've done so much. I've done it four times though. So this is Slimbox. It says, oh look, there's a cat. Which has different help outputs depending on how you're running it. And it does what you would expect cat to do. numbering lines were with blank or without. I mean, this is the most awesome program ever. Mm -hmm. uh, to do this, I'm using something called G-Options. I started off with Flag, the built-in uh, command line flag library for having options on your command line. Well, it's not post 6 compliant. So I switched to using Keyflag, which is a drop and replacement, which is post 6 compliant. When I decided I'm doing this as Slimbox, as a busy box, I want to have subcommands for everything. Keyflag doesn't do that, and it's really frustrating to implement, so I switched to yet another uh, library, Options, Go Options, which is very, you just put short option, long option, and what your description is, and a type. Do a little bit of parsing, which I won't bother to show because I don't have that much time, and then you run your program. For a cat, it was it's very basic. I have things that take an input string and return a mutated mutated line. It's a very simple interface. And as I've been programming through this, it's been a great learning experience for learning more about programming interfaces <coughs> and how to start using these between libraries. So maybe in a few months if I have some more time, you'll see a much tighter library where I can use the concurrency for doing things like word count. I can word count a thousand files in one go, or 16 in the case of my computer. Uh, so, I mean, that's it. It's a ridiculously small project that I started for fun, and it turned out to be a lot more interesting than I actually expected it to be. So, so uh, socket read from standard input and output to a file? Yes, so it does, uh, it does everything. Like, you, you can type any standard input, I can do. Uh, this, this is something that I'm very thankful for the, the person who wrote the G Options library. About 15 minutes before I left to come here, he fixed a, 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 uh, an array out of bounds bug. Okay. So if I went to uh, cat like that, I would, you get what you would expect. It would have readme, followed by license, followed by main go. So right, page up. There is the GPL license. Oh. And there's my readme. Also, if I were just to do it that way, there's my license. So, all test-driven 
everything has a test case, everything has, I won't show those right now, people can ask me there if they want to see or look at my, my Git repo. I won't say they're the cleanest tests, but they exist. Yes? Which, oh, uh, you mentioned caring about the POSIX specification in the argument parsing, and then you went on to implement the interface in the style of git subcommands. How close to the POSIX cat specification? So this was, this was close to like the busy box sort of idea where it's one binder that has all the subcommands, and then it forks out, it forks itself, and then you have aliases to like busy box cat. So cat is busy box cat. And it, and it runs it that way. So everything after your command should be POSIX compliant. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so that was the idea. What's the flag processing library you use? In the G option. Yeah. Can, uh, can you see? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, just sort of trolling for uh, uh, it. Just go to menu. Yeah, just trolling for it. So, okay. ah, G option. Voxel Brain. Voxel Brain. Yeah. It's a great name. Where, where do you put your tests? I always wonder where we put our tests. In your main no, browser? In oh. libcat tests. Yeah. Okay. Really simple tests. Yeah. Oh look, I have Hello World or Hello Golfers. Yeah. So testing two different files. Yep. And you use the built-in testing library. Yes. Good. For the for this situation, I felt built-in was uh, as much yep. as I needed. I didn't need to go overboard. Maybe later I will, but right now it's good. Any other questions? I think it was a good exercise in learning interfaces, right? Yeah, no. So the interfaces will be coming as I start working on ML, which is actually a surprisingly complicated program. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you who don't know what it is, ML does that. But it also does stuff like footer numbering, oh, I see. logic of page breaking. I'm like, oh, I did not know this did any of that. Yeah. All right, that's it.